What's up, y'all? This is Ty. Happy New Year. 2020 is here. We're in 2020. Did y'all have a good holiday? Did you have a good holiday? I really did. I had a great holiday. My Most importantly, my kids had a good Christmas. They had a good Christmas. They enjoyed themselves. They I got them all the gifts they asked for, and I got great gifts. Um, and our New Year's Eve was lit. We were in the house. We had just family in the house laughing, playing games, watching movies, all that, playing music, all this, all that, all of that. And I let them stay up to watch the ball drop. And it's so funny. When the ball dropped, y'all, I dropped. Because right after that, I remember, Happy New Year, yay. And I gave a hug and all this. Here's the family. Next thing I was out. I woke back up. <laughs> they still up. I was like, no, no, no. I had to get them back in daddy mode. No, it's late, kids. Back, Go to bed, go to bed, go to bed. <laughs> it was crazy. But that's not here, what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about the documentary that I just watched. I binge watched the whole thing. It's not that long. It's Kevin Hart's documentary on Netflix, Don't F This Up. That's what it's called. Let me get another sip of my cranberry juice. Now put that over there. All right. Don't F this up. And we know Kevin Hart is a comedian. But what he did was, and with this documentary, which I enjoyed, is he pulled the curtain back on his life and gave us an inside glimpse of who he is as a person, as a comedian, as an actor, as a producer, <laughs> a business mogul, as a husband, as a father, as a brother, as a son as a friend just he really there was a lot of layers here that he covered and i really appreciated that so we know one thing that i took from it he's super busy and i was like dad it, it was inspiring too because i'm like this guy's just all constantly on the move he has his stand-up he has his movies which is like it seems like he's in a movie every other month he's got a new movie coming out but not only that He's doing radio shows. He's doing interviews. He's producing television shows. He has his own streaming network. Um, a whole a production company and a, a fitness line. And he's got to deal with Chase Bank. And when does the man sleep? And on top of that, he has two, no, three children and a wife and an ex-wife. And I'm like... And a father whose health is declining. And I'm like, wow, he's really juggling all these things. So we get to see this inside uh, of his life and how he handled things and the controversy. Controversy. Look, I can't speak. Controversy. You would have thought I drunk something. The controversy that he had to deal with. Um, he touched on things as his marriage to his wife and how when he cheated on her and how he was getting exploited, that was crazy. That makes you not trust people, how he was getting exploited because he had cheated on his wife and someone sent her a DM showing her the video or whatever have you. And then the person was trying to uh, get money from him, extort him over this video or whatever. And turns out, it's supposed to be one of his close friends, somebody that was one of his business partners, someone that was a part of the, the crew. So it kind of hurt him. And Kevin Hart was owning up to, you know, he made a mistake. He messed up. You know, he cheated on his wife. I believe he cheated on his first wife as well. But now his second wife, he was like, yeah, I messed up. I, the wife is in the documentary as well. And she mentions how she was humiliated and brokenhearted. And hurt. And you know, the rumor was, because when I was looking, I was like, well, didn't you get him when he was with his first wife? So I wasn't feeling, I felt a little bad for her, but I was still like, well, you kind of, you got with him under bad circumstances. But the documentary cleared that up. They, they let me know. They said, Ty, you wrong. Because according to them in the documentary, according to him and his second wife, he was not with his first wife, Tori, when he was dealing with, what's this new wife's name, Aniko? She didn't break up any marriage. He, they were already separated, according to what they said in the documentary. So I'm glad he cleared that up, because, you know, that's what we heard. That's what was going on. And so 
he mentioned how, you know, he was, this part I thought he was kind of, he was taking responsibility, but in my opinion, kind of not taking responsibility for cheating because he kind of said something like, you know, he was in Vegas, but he didn't have his crew, his boys there to get his mind, you know, to make sure he does the right things, the right thing. But my point is, it's the only thing I had, I was like, Kevin, my thing is, you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to make sure you don't cheat or mess around on your wife. I ain't judging. I'm just stating, though. I thought that was a little bit of a cop-out. Like, oh, I cheated. I was messing around because I was in Vegas. And my friends weren't there to stop me from doing something stupid. Nah, nah, nah. That's, that's a fail right there. You stop you from doing something stupid. You're a grown man. Control yourself. You, you wanted to dip where you dipped. That was my only thing. I was like, mm, Kevin, I don't know about that one. And then they kind of went into how it hurt. He did say while him hurting his wife, he ended up being hurt because his friend was trying to extort him uh, over this whole cheating scandal. So I thought all of that was very interesting. And I was like, okay. And I did like, I did like his honesty. But like I said, just the little parts of that. I was like, mm, I don't know about this whole thing of, uh, you know, oh, if my friends were there, I wouldn't have. No, if your friends was there, you probably would have still smashed the chick that you smashed. That's just, that's how it is, you know. But um, I also liked when he spoke about his childhood. He spoke highly of his mother, who was very strict. And he had a brother who was always getting in trouble. And the mother just had to let him go as she... Um, groomed Kevin and kept him in activities and, and things. It was really good. And it mentioned, um, of course, sadly, she passed away from cancer. But it also mentioned he got a lot of his uh, spirit from her, his work ethic from her, like that just don't give up and keep trying and just keep pushing and all of that stuff. Um, it also, we get a glimpse of his father, who we know from who he talks about in his comedy, especially in his earlier stand-ups, like Laugh at My Pain. And his father, it was in the documentary, and the father was on drugs. And what I admired about that was how honest the father was about his situation and how honest Kevin was. And it was inspiring because Kevin wasn't bitter. He said, listen, things happen. That was the uh, past. You can't control the past. What matters now is the present. And that spoke to me. I was like, you know what? That's right. That spoke to me. And, you know, his father was seriously on drugs and caused a lot of damage, did a lot of things. But Kevin never, uh, according to the documentary, Kevin didn't hold any grudges because he knew his father had a drug problem and he had drug issues and things like that. So I thought I liked that aspect of it, too. I liked his relationship with his father, I liked um, that his father is so appreciative of him now and how honest his father is. Because, you know, sometimes older people, you know, they act like their stuff don't stink and they you tell them something they did when you was a child and they're like, All right, boy, I ain't did that. I don't know what you're talking about. You had it good. I did the best I could. They never own up to it. So I appreciated that he was owning up, that Kevin Hart's father was owning up to this. And Kevin himself was owning up to a lot of his mistakes, like cheating on the wife and things like that. And um, as I was watching this, I saw, you know, I, went, you know, I always look around, I saw some uh, critiques of this. And I had a few people that was upset with his wife because his wife said something like um, she was glad. She said something like she was glad that he cheated on her because... It um, made him a better person, and the people got all, a few people I knew got all in their feelings about that. Listen, I have nothing to say on that. That's their marriage. That's, listen, that's what they do. Now, another, thing's, uh, another thing in this um, documentary that I enjoyed, I loved his relationship with his children and how he, even though he's always on the road, always on the go, always he still is trying to make sure he makes time for his children and, you know, because they need you. And, you know, as a father, I know how that is. And, I, you know, I'm not nearly as 
busy as Kevin Hart, but I always make sure, you know, I do get busy and I got a lot going on, but I always make sure my kids, you know, so I did like that aspect, like the family aspect of this documentary really spoke to me a lot and I really enjoyed that and I liked his uh, work ethic. Um, another good thing I saw, I like how his team kind of, well, it looked like they hold him accountable. There was a issue with him and one of the Red Cup boys, that's his crew of friends that he now has employed. One of them is his trainer and they were on the plane with him and they were having a conversation and Kevin was kind of belittling and saying stuff like, you know, do you, you know, if this all stopped, where would you be? And the guy, I think his name was Boss, he was saying, listen, I've always gotten money. I always knew how to take care of myself. I don't measure myself by this, that, you know, if something happens, I'll be good. And then they just got into, I was all totally on his friend's boss side. I totally agree with what he was saying. Like, no matter the situation, if all this stops now, I'm going to be good because I'm going to find a way and I'm going to know how to make a way. So I did like that. Kevin did come off a bit as a bit of a jerk in that instance. They looked like they were about to come to blows on the private jet, but they didn't. Again, Kevin owned up saying he was being a jerk. He was being a fool. And then he kind of mentioned that it was because, you know, of that. He was kind of still on edge and a little bit upset about the uh, so-called friend who was extorting him. So, and maybe he kind of took that out on boss. So yeah, I thought that was good. And then, you know, there was the controversy of the uh, LGBT community um, where there's some, there were some jokes about gays, about not wanting his son to be gay or turn out gay that had resurfaced from 10 years ago, and we see where Kevin was very, came off a little arrogant, only because they wanted him to apologize. And he was like, I spoke about this already. I'm not apologizing, I apologized before. I'm not homophobic, that was a long time ago, leave it alone. But see, when you're in the spotlight, and you're dealing in, when you're in the spotlight, you're the big superstar that he is, and you're in this climate right now where everything is so, people get outraged and offended by things, you gotta apologize. So he kind of, they showed how he was doing things and they showed how he was kind of tap dancing around it a little bit. He was, he said, well, you know, it was a mistake or whatever. And then they showed that response he gave and his own crew, his friends and his crew was like, your delivery was wrong. I get what you were trying to say, and we know you. We know that you're not a homophobe, but the way you were handling it, it wasn't cool. It was a little cocky, you know, and it was weird to me, even when I remember when all that was going on, he was kind of saying, I'm going to, I'm not apologizing. I'll just step down. I won't host the Oscars. It's no big deal. And then he went on Twitter and apologized anyway, so it was kind of weird when he was doing all that. And I liked how this documentary explained that and how he even admitted he did it the wrong way. He should have just flat out, listen, I apologize yet again. But he was so busy trying to fight off the trolls and so busy trying to say, well, listen, I already apologized, that's that. But he didn't understand the people that were offended where they were coming from. So I kind of saw both sides, but I like how he sat down with his team and I like how his team and his publicists and all of them were saying, listen, no, you need to shut up. You need to shut up. But see, this that's the thing with fame. This was a guy who's used to everybody liking him, being loved and never being wrong. So it's hard for you to not do things your way. Say what you want to say and do what you want to do. I mean, look how successful he is. So I guess it was his first time having that type of backlash. So he was like, no, I, I'm not going to to talk about it anymore and he thought that responding like that was going to make it go away but it didn't it, there was more of a backlash because people felt like he was ignoring it and being arrogant and whatever have you so i really liked that episode as well where they pretty much discussed and how his friends his crew they weren't yes men they didn't like it either and they were telling him listen this i know you're not homophobic Phobic, and I know you're not a bad person, but the way you're handling this right now, not good. It, it almost seemed like it was like the crisis team, and I like that. They gave us a little inside look on how to how the celebrities 
deal with crisis and try to clean things up and fix things up the team he has a really 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 good team with him you know i i like that so i think i've covered all the things that i enjoyed about the um documentary let me know if you watched it i thought it was really good really really good it really got to i got to see more a different side of him i guess like I guess you could say that, but I really like that. I like when celebrities open that curtain and tell you a little bit more about themselves. Um, but then someone else was saying to me, hmm, this all could be rehearsed and fake and phony because why are you filming your meeting about dealing with this uh, homophobic, these homophobic accusations? Somebody has said that to me. Oh, I thought that was kind of phony. I don't know. What do you guys think? I didn't think it was phony. I think, listen, he's a celebrity. He's a smart guy. He knows eventually he has to answer these things. So, you know, he put this out here as kind of an answer to a lot of things that was going on. And um, it hasn't, it was a little spot on his career, but it didn't hurt his career because Jumanji's making money and the films he's doing, they continue to make money and the films he's producing and writing. He's, he's building an empire. Lastly, I liked um, that he was so honest about why he worked so much. It's because how, of how poor he was and he has that fear of returning to that. You know, that whole fear of returning to that. And I was like, yeah, I can get that. And again, I ain't on his scale financially, not yet anyway. But I can imagine, you know, I know, I get that. You want to make sure you have everything. You don't want to let people down. You're feeding all these people. People are working for you. You just want to build an empire. And, you know, it was, yeah, that's it. It was really good. I thought it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. So kudos to Kevin Hart for the um, documentary, Don't F This Up. On Netflix, so you can watch it now. Thank you, and again, please like, comment, subscribe. Share your comments below. Hit that bell notification, and be blessed. And once again, Happy New Year, y'all. I'm out.